The correct installation of a VSAT antenna is a fundamental process in order for the user to receive satellite content properly, thereby avoiding interferences that could be disruptive both for the operator and the user. With the help of this video tutorial and using ISPASAT's installation manual as a reference, the user will be able to easily and securely install their VSAT antenna. Once the installation has been successfully completed, they will be able to use their VSAT to access the portfolio of solutions and services offered by the company. Installation of VSAT system The installation you're going to perform basically consists of two components. One is the ODU or outdoor unit and the other is the IDU or indoor unit. ODU installation ODU components all of the elements that make up the ODU will have to be certified by ISPASAT and consist of the following pieces. One reflector. One support for the reflector. One mast. One feed support. One feed. One LNB. One BUC or transmitter. In addition to these components, you will need to have two coaxial cables for TX and RX connectors. Tools for the installation To install the ODU, the installer will need to have the following components. Compass, inclinometer, field meter, GPS, 7, 11 and 13 spanners, set of screwdrivers, Allen keys, self-bonding tape, outdoor tie wraps, and for the installation of the support, a drill, level, screws, and wall plugs. Choosing the place to install the antenna. In order to correctly receive broadcasts from ISPASAT, the satellite dish may be installed on rooftops, balconies, walls or gardens, as long as they have a clear view towards the southeast or northeast, depending on whether it is located above or below the equator, and there should be no geographical obstacles that prevent a direct line of sight between the antenna and the ISPASAT satellites. Since the antenna also transmits, it is important to block off an area around it to make sure that people will not be passing through the radiation area of the antenna. Mounting the ODU To mount the ODU, you must first assemble the feed to the LNB and the transmitter. To do so, you must begin by joining the feed to the LNB using the proper screw. Once they are joined, assemble them to the transmitter. You may then assemble and install the antenna. To mount the antenna, a straight support, L-shaped support or a tripod with a tube diameter of 60 mm must be used. The support must be well leveled. Then, the three pieces that make up the head of the antenna are assembled, which will enable you to correctly orient it. The support contains the fine-tuning bolts and connection to earth. Once the head is fitted, you must assemble it to the antenna without tightening it completely. After it has been placed on the support, tighten the bolts. The next step is to fasten the mast to the antenna. To do so, first check that its position is correct and then you must tighten the bolts.
Then fasten the feed support to the end of the mast, again ensuring that its position is correct. Afterwards, you must place the components of the ODU that you previously assembled. It is important to take note of the position of the ODU block in relation to vertical in order to correctly adjust the polarization later on. RF cable connection. You may then connect the TX and RX cables, always leaving enough cable length in order not to overstretch them. The transmission and reception cables should be labelled TX and RX at both ends. Use the outdoor tie wraps, spacing them such that the cables are not left loose. Lastly, protect both connectors from moisture and rain by carefully wrapping them in self-bonding tape. If possible, connect one of the building's earth cables to the antenna mast. Installing the IDU. IDU Components For this configuration, the IDU is made up of a Gillett Sky-E VSAT terminal. Connecting the terminal. The IDU has two F connectors for the TX and RX cables that come from the ODU, an Ethernet interface for connecting with the client's computers, and a power cable. Configuration of the computer. In order to configure the terminal, a PC must first be connected via Ethernet cable to the terminal and after this has been done, you must manually configure the IP assigned to the PC in order to have access to it. In the PC, go to Control Panel Network Connections. Right-click on Local Area Connection and select Properties. The terminals of the Gilad platform have a default IP address, which means that you must configure your computer to an IP address in this range to connect the two systems. After doing so, access the terminal by entering the correct address in the Internet browser. By doing so, you will access the terminal's home page status, which will show us a summary of its status. Configuration of the terminal In order to correctly configure the terminal, you must go to the Installer tab. To access this tab, you must enter the user data that you can find in the installation manual on Ispasat's website. This way you will be able to access the following page. By clicking on Setup, you can see the entire configuration of the terminal, which you must fill in according to the parameters that appear in the installation manual using the values provided by the ISP. When the configuration has been completed, click Submit to apply the changes. Orientation of the antenna. Before beginning the orientation process, it is necessary to obtain the azimuth, elevation and polarization values for the GPS position of the installation. These data can be obtained on many different web pages. For example, in the case of Madrid, the values would be azimuth 217.67 degrees north, elevation 35.98 degrees and polarization 27.77 degrees north. Approximate adjustment. For the approximate adjustment of the azimuth, you can use the compass to find the orientation. 217.67 degrees if we use the example of Madrid. Rotate the whole block until the best point for the approximate orientation is reached. For the approximate adjustment of the elevation, you must raise or lower the antenna until the notch that is below the nut is placed at the elevation obtained based on our GPS position. Finally, in order to adjust the polarization, rotate the reflector until it is placed in the correct position. 
after doing so, access the terminal. In the status section in the telemetry subsection, we can see the orientation value RX signal ESN0, which will change in real time according to the modifications made to the orientation of the antenna, and which, without having yet done any fine tuning, will not be valid. Fine tuning. A more precise orientation will be obtained from fine tuning. To do so, we must first obtain the best value of the RX signal ESN0, which must be above the minimum required for our GPS position. Azimuth. Rotate the whole block by using the fine tuning bolts for the azimuth. Elevation. Raise or lower the antenna by using the fine tuning bolts. Automatic alignment. The fine tuning of the cross polarization must be done through an automatic alignment. To initiate it, go to Installer, Antenna, and click Start Alignment, and then click Cross Pole. In order for the alignment to be valid, the value of the cross pole must be the lowest possible. In order to do so, you will have to fine tune the cross polarization by rotating the BUC. Once you have obtained said value, after a few seconds the alignment will be validated and you can finalize the process by clicking End Alignment. After this has been done, you will have to go to the Commands section and click on Enter Installation Mode and then click Accept. Lastly, press Reset VSAT to save and apply the configuration. Synchronization After this last process, the installation process of the terminal is completed. Installation testing. Once the previous steps have been carried out, the installation of a VSAT on the GILAT platform is complete, and you can try browsing using the PC connected to the terminal.